guys, welcome back. I'm Jeff, this is Stuff I Made. And today's video is part one of a two part build video on my Hotwire phone cutter. Now, I put out an overview video of it showing all of its features and its functionality and the link I will put up here or in the comments. I suggest if you haven't seen that, go and watch it, come back and then this will make a lot more sense because you'll know some of the parts that I'm talking about as I go through this video. So this video is not a step-by-step -step guide, but you'll get enough insight into my thought processes and my problem solving in building this that it should give you a really good head start if you're going to have a, a go at making one of these yourself. Um, what I'll do, if you have questions and comments, shoot them down below, but I'd suggest read the, um, the description first because I'll try and answer common questions there. I'll, I'll move the, the answers up. Um, I'll try and put resource links as people ask for information about the items I've used. If I have the answers, I'll put them in the description as well. So that's worth a, a good read um, as the, the audience progresses with the questions. Um, what else? There will be an electric diagram. Um, there will not be plans, but there will be an electric diagram. And if you want to get hold of that, follow me on Instagram because I'll post when that's up from my Instagram account. Uh, the link to that should be in the description of this video. Uh, anyhow, let's take a look, see how I made it. Don't forget to subscribe. So firstly I'm going to laminate the Formica to the birch ply. I'm using some contact adhesive and spreading it out evenly on both sides. Now that's the biggest piece of Formica I had so I was quite fortunate with that. And I just weighted down with all the, the steel weights that I have. A bit of old railway sleeper. And then once it's set I trim it on the table saw. To ensure a really clean cut on the laminate, I've got the laminate face up with a piece of ply on top. I find I just get a much cleaner cut. The laminate's very brittle and you get tear outs on the edges. So here I'm just measuring up for the, the arm that will hold the what the nichrome wire and cutting it to some rough size. And now for the corner brackets, I'm using a, a, temp, a wooden template to make corner brackets out of some aluminium which I have off an old G5 Mac. And here you can just see me marking that up. So this is a bimetal blade and it cuts through the aluminium very well. I'm able to easily cut these templates out. I think it's about three or four mil thick aluminium. So using some double sided tape I fix it to the template. So I fix both pieces of aluminium to one side of the template. It makes it easier to clean up and be as accurate as possible. And then I'm marking up half the width of the aluminium extrusion so that I can punch for the uh, drill bit and drill the holes that will hold the, the bolts and T-nuts, allowing the extrusion to slide on. I find when drilling through aluminium, if you have a backer of wood, it, it can lift the aluminium off and create a bear on the other side. But if you drill through and it's pushed against another piece of aluminium, um, you get less of a bear on the other side of the hole. So these bolts and nuts here are from the Open Builds website along with the aluminium extrusion. I had the extrusion and the bolts and T-nuts from a previous project, a failed attempt at making some jig, but I found them to be very useful just to have when making jigs. And perfect for this use here, making the arm of the um, hot wire foam cutter. I didn't film all of this, but I drew a pivot hole and a locking hole in the aluminium extrusion. And now I'm making here the micro adjuster so I can adjust left and right and backwards and forwards the angle of the wire as it goes down towards the table. To allow for the direction, the directional movement of this plate, uh, I'm drilling oversized holes so that there will be some slot. And I'll use a bolt with some washers to secure it down and give me the flexibility to move it in both directions. It will make sense, uh, or more sense in a minute as you see it develop.
So here you can see the T-bolt, T-nuts and bolts with the washers and the oversized holes allowing for movement left and right and then obviously you can move forwards and backwards in the channel of the extrusion. But this design to totally changes as I evolve it. I want the tensioner there which is hanging off the bolt with the spring. Um, I want some more flexibility on that. So I've decided to to change that and you'll see what happens now. So I'm just cutting a groove for the wire to, to rest in and just filing out that so that it's uh, smooth and not abrasive to the wire. And the design calls for it flipping the whole piece the other way up. So as you can see now, and you can see further back there, I have a, a, a riser, a bolt with a spring on it, and that the tension is going to be along the arm, the top side of the arm. So here I'm just fitting an LED strip of lights into the um, groove of an extrusion, and it fits perfectly, so ideal for this scenario. Now I am just testing the lights, looks great. Now the wire feeds down the centre, the core of the extrusion, um, and you can see me just feeding it through here. Now the two pivot holes that allow me to pivot and lock the, the arm as it piv pivots on the table, well the wire can't carry on through the core because the hole goes through the centre, so I have to come out the side and down one of the side channels, and you can see me just feeding the wire through here. So there's there's the wire for the lights and there's also the wire for the heat for the electricity for the nichrome wire. And as I feed this uh, extrusion back into the T bolts, you can see the wire coming out the centre core there. But it also wraps around and makes a little corner here, um, into back into the hole. I wasn't happy with this, so later on I redo this and I drill a hole at an angle into the centre of the channel on the top piece allowing me to bypass going around the outside here. So these little plastic pieces um, I'm using just to secure the wire as it passes around the pivot holes. But actually I decide later I don't like these for this purpose so I take them off and you'll see what solution I come up with later. But it's a lot tidier. I think the whole thing about this build is as I did one thing I thought of a better idea and redid it and uh, that's probably why it took so long but I kept evolving the design, so you can see it looks quite untidy. So here's the solution I came up with, and it's a piece of foam cut slightly oversized and just pulled up inside the extrusion, covering the wire. And then I've got little plastic end caps that come with these extrusions, and I've just drilled and filed a hole there to tidy up the wire management. So just using some 24mm birch ply as the back piece of the foam cutter, and this will hold the pivot arm, so there will be an arc cut out of this and a centre hole to pivot and lock the arm. And I'm just marking it up now, ready for cutting up the bandsaw. So the first thing to do on this template is to drill the pivot hole and then I'll use this by putting the bolt through into a piece of wood below to pivot as I drill each hole and you can see now there's the bolt going through and as I drill each hole um, I'm drilling exactly the same distance from the pivot hole. Now I could have done this on a router table, it probably would have been a lot tidier. Um, I think this just felt a bit safer at the time. I think what I might do if I did this again was probably try it on the router table um, in, in light passes. But anyway, I did what I did. So just cutting it out on the bandsaw, and I think I tidy it up on the bobbin sander, just to get a nice enough shape, give it a bit of a clean up. The, the hole from the, from using the drill bits, you can see it's a little bit rough. So what I do is I make um, a little tiny stick sander by using some uh, spray on adhesive and a strip of, I think I used 80 grit just to tidy this hole up. So as I progressed the build, I decided that the full micro base would benefit from being just over 20mm thick, which is the thickness of one of the aluminium extrusions. Now as the base will have an extrusion sat each side of it, it just makes it easier with the rest of the build, which you'll see later as to the benefit of this. So right now I'm just laminating on a couple of thin bits of ply to get this down to the 20mm that I require.
So I'm just getting rid of the the oversized bits from the initial base, making sure it's all square. So now I'm just cutting the aluminium extrusions to length to, to meet the sides and you can see there now um, those having those pieces the same height means that when I create these two pieces which will uh, hold the arms and then screw underneath of the base that it will just fit nicely. So I'm just countersinking for some T-bolts and then drilling through holes for the longer bolts. Sorry, not T-bolts, bolts and T-nuts. If you haven't seen my video for those cable connectors, um, I'll put a link below. But it makes it very easy to just switch tools and not have to ravel up cables. But yeah, check that out. So here you can see the, the aluminium extrusion sliding onto the bases, the base supports, and then tightening up. And now I rest the top on and it's all pretty much level. I, I wanted the aluminium extrusions just to be the thickness of the veneer below um, so that they didn't extrude or protrude rather above the top. So just working out what I need to cut out of the back of the base there so that the arm has space to pivot. I'm just using um, the scroll saw in this instance because I, I want it as clean a cut as possible on the laminate. Uh, so I put masking tape down first. I did a little test cut in there with masking tape to make sure that it was a clean cut and it was. So when the arm pivots I hadn't cut quite enough out so what I've done is angled the scroll saw and I go back and nibble a bit at the top edge out. So now I'm just angling the blade to cut the base. Um, so I have two front feet to make and a back section. And I decided that I wanted this angle, angled look to complement the front angle. And I'm just marking out, removing some of this section here because I need the space for the electrics. So I'm taking out um, an angle on both sides and then straighten all the back. It actually creates quite a unique looking shape, I quite like this. So I'm just trimming the second of two front feet. And these will connect the uh, extrusion supports to the back piece. The plywood stretches with the extrusions on will support the top. And you can see the walnut front. Um, you see it's starting to take shape a little bit now. The back leg will come out 18mm to support the back, or 24mm actually, to support the back piece of uh, the pivot arm, this piece here, which isn't cut to width yet, which I'm just doing now actually. So I'm clamping down and squaring up the front feet so, um, so that I can countersink and screw from above. I seem to get more questions about the tools I use when I post a video, so I'll answer one that I predict. The countersink bit, bit that I'm using is a Festool Centrotech and it's brilliant. Yeah, that's all I can really say about it. I just love it. So now I'm fitting the rail supports to the base, or to the top. And I'm just squaring them at the at one end, at the front end where the walnut piece will sit, clamping it up. I'm using the one, two, three blocks to just mark out some spacing to save measuring. It's just a lot quicker. So I'm just extending the line out from the extrusion so that I can remove a section of the, the back here to allow for any clamps or uh, rails to go in. That piece was cut out of the band, so I didn't video that. So I clamp the bottom piece to the pivot arm support, then mark um, halfway in, ready for the pre-drilling some screw holes. I only uh, use screws, no glue here. I want to give plenty of support to that top piece. So for this project I needed to make a few epoxy knobs, some with threaded inserts, some with bolts. Um, I won't cover it in depth here, 
but I do have a separate video which I'll post a link to in the comments um, and try and post one here in the video. So if you're interested in that, go and check it out. Otherwise, I'll just give you a quick overview. So basically, I've, I've used um, a resin, a, a quick set of resin here in this instance, um, with some black pigment, and I'm pouring it in a chocolatier's mold around um, threaded inserts. Uh, I do create some with bolts in as well. So anyway, I think um, that'll do for part one. I'll, I'll try and complete part two and get it up early next week. Um, yeah, if you've got questions or comments, put them in below uh, and I'll try and answer all that I can. Please understand that some of the decisions I made were based on what I had to hand, so perhaps not the best way of doing things, but it was just uh, the process for me. Anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this one.